Okay, um, welcome. Um, my name is uh, Joris van den Bossen. Um, and I'm going to uh, introduce you uh, to the GeoPandas library. Maybe just because I'm also curious, um, who has already heard of GeoPandas before? Uh, and who has already used it? Few people, cool. Um, so very short about my, myself. Um, I'm a, PhD, uh, a bioscience engineer uh, in Ghent, but I'm currently working in uh, Paris for the Paris Saclay Center for Data Science, and I'm also a core developer of uh, Pandas. So um, for this audience, I don't have to explain uh, the difference between raster and vector data, but showing this to say that in this talk, I will focus on vector data. So if I'm talking about geospatial data analysis, in this talk is about vector data, it's so about uh, the typical simple features uh, with uh, attributes. Um, again, for this audience, I also don't have to explain that there is a lot of open source geospatial software where uh, full uh, stacks of, of tools are built upon. Uh, you have GDAL, uh, you have Geos. Uh, but again, that's to say that in Python, it's not no different. Uh, no different. There are a lot of Python packages, which already have been mentioned in, uh, in, pre in previous talks as well, that build upon those base uh, libraries. So uh, you have, for example, PyProy for Proy4, um, and Raster.io and Fiona are, uh, and Shapely have already been mentioned. Fiona uh, for the vector uh, features of GDAL, Shapely wrapping uh, the Geos library. So I'm going to shortly uh, Look a bit more in detail in Shapely. So it's an interface, it's using Geos under the hood and provides you all the ability, uh, capabilities, the geometry objects uh, and all the special operations predicates that you would like to do on them. Very short uh, code snippet to show you a bit how it looks like. So you can create a point, uh, create a line string, uh, can do an operation on it, for example, buffer, which creates polygon. And then I can check uh, with a special predicate whether the polygon contains the point. So a very nice uh, uh, API to Geos. Um, but uh, the limitation of Shapely is it's based around those uh, objects, single objects, while in practice you often, of course, have many of those points or lines. And there's also no uh, easy way to work with uh, attributes, so not uh, with the typical uh, data that is attached to your uh, geometrical data, uh, your, yeah, your geometrical data. On the other hand, in Python there is a very strong uh, ecosystem uh, of tools to work with data. So uh, Pandas is one of those packages that uh, is yeah, with uh, the reasons for the increasing uh, use of Python in, in data science, machine learning, and academic research in general for data analysis. It provides uh, data structures typically, uh, specifically to work with tabular data. Uh, so spreadsheet-like data, uh, like our data frame, you also have a pandas data frame, and very similar things that maybe you could do with uh, SQL uh, database tables, uh, you can also do with pandas. Again, a very small snippet. So you have a lot of input-output functionality, and you can do uh, there are two operations. The first one is a Boolean filtering, which would be in SQL a where operation and a group by operation. So many of those typical data manipulation uh, things are available in Pandas. So now, what is GeoPandas? GeoPandas tries to combine uh, Pandas uh, with the um, abilities of Shapely to work with uh, geometry objects. And in that way, uh, try, tries to make it easier to work with um, uh, a bunch of geometry objects and its uh, data attributes. So it was started by uh, Kelsey Jordal um, already a few years ago. Um, and it's not only Pandas and Shapely that it will uh, build upon, it also builds upon many of the other uh, libraries, for example, Fiona and GDAL for the input output, uh, PryPro for uh, reprojections, R3, spatial index. Um, and um, but to give you really a bit an idea of 
what is it, what it is, how it does it work. Um, let's try some live uh, demo, and I will increase this in size. This is fine, size. Um, so importing a few things. So the first thing that GeoPandas can do, of course, you want to get data from somewhere. And there is a lot of input-output functionality, mainly based on Fiona and thus on GDAL. Uh, as an example, uh, data uh, throughout this notebook, um, I downloaded some data about a share, uh, bicycle sharing system in Paris, uh, different stations and how many bikes there are in the stations. And I also, as a geo-JSON file, it's not fully visible, uh, but you see it's a geo-JSON file. Um, and also, so I will, can read in that. You see here uh, how it looks like. I sh show the first couple of um, rows. So you have your attributes, uh, and then a column, in this case called geometry, which are your uh, geometrical objects. And for this data, it are points. Um, but I also downloaded the different districts of Paris. Um, and if I read in that one, you will see here, if I a bit inside. Here the, uh, my geometries are uh, polygons. So what are those things that I showed? If you look at it, it's a geo data frame. So it's just a data frame, like Pandas does, so with all the uh, ability to, to handle, uh, uh, to manipulate its data frame, but with a special column, your geometry column, which will enable all the uh, geospatial uh, um, operations you want. So this column can always be accessed at dot geometry. So here there are my points, um, which is called a geo series in this case. And if you access a single element of, of that series, uh, you will get back those uh, shapely uh, objects. So you uh, uh, still have the interface of shapely available uh, on the single uh, objects. As I said, it's still a data frame, so all the typical operations you can still do. For example, here, what I do here, uh, just one example, I do some Boolean filtering uh, by uh, saying I only want those rows where uh, the, the station actually open, it's actually a working uh, station. Or that's one of the other uh, abilities of Pandas to quickly visualize some of the other, uh, one, some of your attributes. For example, here is uh, the number of uh, bike stands in all the stations, so you see a distribution of them. Um, but since it's now a geodata frame, you also have access to all the uh, typical operations and predicates that are available um, in geos. For example, I want to, for each district, the area, in this case, yeah, it's in latitude longitude, so the area is not saying that much. Um, or uh, I could calculate um, for each station the distance to a single point. So I took, um, I searched for using GeoPy uh, the coordinates of the Notre Dame in Paris. So this is this point. So I, now I want to know what is the uh, distance from all my stations to that point. And then again, you can very easily calculate uh, this. <coughs> And uh, you get vectorized element-wise operations for all the geometries in the object. Um, another one is, for example, contains. So which uh, district contains the Notre Dame? Gives you true and false values. So I can do a, a filtering operation. And you can indeed see that this is the quartier, which is called Notre Dame. So it's logical that the Notre Dame is uh, there. So all the other uh, typical covers, crosses, intersects, uh, all those uh, operations are available as methods on a geo data frame and a geo series. Another thing that GeoPandas provides is uh, using Matplotlib under the hood to very uh, quickly visualize uh, some basic visualizations of the data that you have. For example, I can plot all the uh, different uh, districts um, or I can give them some coloring um, or some other column. Yeah, give 
all the styling options of Matplotlib are available, uh, just to show you a few of them. Um, the stations are a bunch of points. So because it would be easier to see where is something located, if I put some streets behind it, I download it using another li library, uh, OSM and X. Uh, I saved the, the streets of Paris as a shape file, uh, which I read in uh, here. So this is my data, and you will see now I have line strings in my uh, geometry column. So now I can quickly plot some streets on it. Um, and I can also give coloring based off one of my attributes, uh, which is also something you would might want to do. So here, the coloring means the number of available bikes. Um, yeah, over here, something else, the bigger district. Uh, so, some basic operations, some visualization, um, and of course, Japanus also has um, the ability to do some more advanced uh, operations like spatial joints, overlays, uh, and things like that. So here, a small example of a join, um, where I want to join uh, for each station in which uh, uh, district it is uh, it, it lies in, it's, it's located in. Um, so I can join them, and now you will see that uh, here. At the end, there is a new column added to my stations, uh, to the name of the district. Um, and then, for example, I count. Uh, I can, for example, group by uh, based on this name and count the number of stations in each district. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but then I can, for example, plot the number of stations of each district. Um, okay, so that was a very short demo of what um, GeoPandas looks like. So uh, it gives you a lot of read-write uh, ability, general manipulation of your data, all the geospatial predicates. Uh, what I didn't show that you can also easily reproject from uh, uh, your data, um, and then a visualization and choice. Um, but um, yeah. So I hope that, in one of, for me at least, uh, one of the strengths of using uh, Python with, with UPAN is that you can very interactively explore and analyze uh, your data. There are also a lot of other libraries that I uh, didn't uh, mention here that work uh, or can work with, with UPAN as data frames. But uh, yeah, I don't have uh, time to go much deeper here. So I hope that I have shown a bit that it can be rather, it gives a nice interface, an easy interface to work with your geospatial data. Um, but is it also fast? Is it also a bit uh, somewhat performant uh, to do that in Python? Um, so at the moment, uh, GeoPandas can be um, rather slow if you have a lot of data. In the demo that I showed, there was no problem at all, but of course it was a very small data set. Um, so it's always a bit difficult to say yeah, what is slow, what is fast. You will see for 100,000 points, a simple within a simple distance operations, each take more or less a second. Um, and once you do, yeah, if you do that many times, uh, which is uh, typical in, in uh, some analysis, it can be quickly add up. Um, but you have some more an ID. I uh, did a comparison with uh, PostJS. Uh, you don't have to go into the detail of the spatial join. Uh, so, it's an example from the boundless tutorial. I have to say, I'm not a PostGIS expert, so I don't know if, I, if it's an optimized query or if my system was optimized, but anyhow, it gives some spa interesting things, because you can see that PostGIS is a lot faster than uh, GeoPandas, while it's actually based on the same library under the hood. It's both using Geos for the same uh, things. So why is GeoPandas slower? It's because there's a lot of overhead in the way that we use. Eh? So if you use a, a call a distance operation in GeoPandas, we will call, uh, we will loop over our objects, call Shapely, and Shapely then calls uh, Geos. So that creates some overhead. So luckily, there is a new uh, version of GeoPandas in development, 
uh, which tries to reduce this overhead uh, by only storing the pointers to the actual uh, geos, geometry objects, and uh, calling geos directly. But still, if you access a single uh, point, you still get a nice shapely geometry object. So the same API, it will have exactly the same API, but much better performance and also uh, memory use. Result, uh, what well it was before, um, and now the green with the new version. So on very simple things, you get 10 to 100 times speed up. Um, but you also see that for a bit more the advanced ones, that we're now much more or less similar as post which is actually uh, also somehow to be expected since we're using the same uh, library under the hood. Um, so you can read a lot more about those developments on those two blog posts. You can also very easily install it with Conda. Uh, there are libraries, uh, uh, binary, uh, binaries available for the development version as well. Uh, so you can, if you want to try it out, certainly welcome. So it's yeah, still new, so um, some real world usage uh, is certainly welcome to uh, uh, test it out. So we see that the next version will also be fast. Um, but is it also scalable? Because uh, the Python ecosystem uh, with, uh, based on NumPy, Pandas, so it's a very strong ecosystem, also optimized fast. As long as you're working in memory, single core, uh, then it's very optimized. Um, it's a typical uh, or limitation of, of, of uh, the, the ecosystem in Python. But there have been some, uh, over the last years, uh, developments. And one of the more um, um, yeah, uh, popular ones is um, Dusk, which is a library that um, provides parallelism and distributed computing. It's written in pure Python, but lets you work on larger than memory data sets uh, from just your laptop to use all the cores to big machines with many cores or uh, distributed system with, uh, with, uh, with uh, thousands of cores. Um, how does it do that? By just using the existing ecosystem. It just uses pandas or numpy, but uh, it will use blocked algorithms uh, and create task graphs, and it has a scheduler to then uh, execute those task graphs. So we can uh, use Dask as well to parallelize our um, GeoPandas. And there has been an experiment. So uh, there was a blog post last summer of Ravi Shekhar, uh, who did on the taxi data of New York. It had 120 million uh, rows of uh, records of a person who somewhere uh, took a taxi to another place. And what he wanted to do was, um, for each of those rows, do a spatial join with the uh, districts or the, the, the taxi zones to know for each point in which, which taxi zone did it start and end. So on this laptop, it took uh, more than uh, three hours uh, with the version then. Matthew Rocklin, the person who uh, collaborated with me on the new developments, tried it out on his laptop. And uh, it could, was able with a new version and with parallelizing it uh, to be able to do it in eight minutes. And this is based on Dask GeoPandas, which is a very experimental uh, library to also parallelize um, the uh, computations of geos. Um, so I will almost stop, so there's still some time for questions. But what I would like to show you, just to also get an ID. So this is the final plot for each taxi zone that they made. And for each taxi zone, the color gives the amount of uh, trips that were uh, started in that zone. Um, they did that on 100 uh, for the full all data of um, 2015, which are 120 uh, million records. Um, I did a small uh, replication of it, but with only 10 million records for one month. Um, so with the the current version of GeoPandas took me about 20 minutes. With the new version, it decreased to two minutes. Uh, and I'm not now going to run it in parallel on the four cores of my. Uh, so it created a kind of cluster. 
course, on my machine, it's not a real cluster because I only have one worker with four cores. Um, but I want to show you. So these are the different uh, zones. There are 263 zones. Um, so it's a data set of 1.6 uh, gigabytes, uh, around 10 million rows. And what I will do is I will read in the data set to CSV file. I will do a special join uh, with the zones um, and then uh, do some uh, calculations on that. Just to give you an idea, um, Dusk uh, will then create a task graph. Hey, does it all in chunks, uh, and this task graph will then be uh, executed, can be executed on a local uh, laptop, but also on a distributed uh, cluster. Um, first, going to open here the dashboard that uh, Dusk provides, um, so we can see what is going on. So now I will um, execute this. And hopefully, if I go to the status, yeah. So you can now you can see a bit the progress uh, of uh, the calculations of the different tasks. Uh, you can see that it uses my four uh, cores, and you can also see so this the blue blocks here are the special joins. And so you can see that it's actually doing special joins on parts, subsets of the data uh, on all the four cores, so in, in parallel uh, on my uh, laptop. And this can very easily be scaled to a big machine with many cores or even a distributed uh, cluster. Uh, and normally, it should take around, uh, in this case, uh, around one minute. So on my laptop, with my four cores, it went from two to only one minute, so it's not a huge speed up, but uh, if you have many cores, it could be certainly uh, more uh, helpful. Well, it was the last uh, demo, so uh, thank you for your attention. Um, A little bit time for questions, I think. Yeah. Um, do you also uh, support different uh, ways of plotting the data? Like next to multiple bits, stuff like uh, or both? Yeah. So at the moment, the built in uh, dot plot method uh, is based on Mapplelib. Uh, but yeah, the, for example, the plot in the blog post that I sh quickly showed um, was actually a bokeh plot. Um, so you can use or leaflets or bokeh, uh, but they are not built in in GeoPandas itself. Uh, but it's uh, it could be added, and it's also certainly possible to to build with them. Um. Yes, the last demo was really interesting, and I'm just wondering, can uh, we replicate the same thing for the uh, zonal statistics scheme, uh, having a raster and boundaries? If it would be possible, or yeah, if it's possible, do we have the infrastructure, the policy, or the infrastructure to do that? To do the that you do it in uh, specially. Yeah, zonal statistics through pandas and that. Uh, yeah, that should be uh, should yeah. be possible. The at the moment also. So one of the things uh, what I didn't mention is uh, now the data was just partitioned in chunks, and in principle they can also be partitioned in uh, by zone that you can even get a more efficient, uh, certain AI operations can be more efficient if they are uh, uh, partitioned by zones. But yeah, just in general, they're not the. So uh, that's already has the infrastructure to do zonal statistics with the rasters. Ah, no. So with, um, at the moment, uh, to, to combine it with raster data, there is nothing built into GeoPandas itself. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so the question was, if you're handling 100 million of points, is there uh, a special index? Um, 
So in GeoPandas, in the current version, we use R3 uh, Python package, which is based on lib spatial index, uh, which is used in the spatial join. Uh, in the new version, where we the, the Cytonized version, we use the str3 of Geos um, to uh, improve the the spatial joins.